I love this going live because you push a button and you wait and you wait and you wait. And hi, Dan. How are you? Just fine, Mike. How are you doing? Good. And uh, guys, I'm not watching Facebook, so if somebody can just comment, our audio is okay. This is sort of uh, sometimes a bit of a challenge, but uh, Wilbert or Bob, hi. If one of you uh, just want to say something in the chat that uh, you're happy with the audio levels, that would be great. And uh, so what we're going to actually do today is talk about full duplex. And every 6,000 radio has du has full duplex. And, uh, and full duplex is the ability to actually be able to receive and... Uh, while you're transmitting. Now, there are different points in time, what you could do with it and what flexibility you have. But we'll focus at it, at least in the beginning, from um, a single spectral capture unit radio, like a 6500 uh, or 6300 or 6400. We're going to demo this on a 6500. Um, I think, uh, Dan, you know, it's probably one of the most under-talked about tools we have in like uh, tracking notch filters and AGCT, it's probably one of the most powerful tools we have. And it, yeah, agreed. Yeah, it's it's the um, it, it's a great way to hear what your signal sounds like, especially was, for uh, single sideband folks. But um, it's an excellent way to do that. I was um, on the phone with a microwave guy, a friend of mine earlier today, and. Uh, Said, oh, I was on two meters. I got my transverter fixed, and the guy said I still sounded like terrible. And I said, Well, did you listen to yourself? Crickets. And so I told him, I don't want to mention his name. I said, Well, spin up another receiver and put it on put it on the IF frequency, you know, 28, whatever you were at. And he understood what I meant and listen to yourself. So while we were on the phone, he did that and turned on the full duplex button and said, Oh, yeah, a little delay, but I sound fine here, and it's really great thing to listen to because you're actually listening to yourself in the RF domain, meaning in the RF area. So one of the questions we get a lot, or when I try to explain this to people, um, is RF will overload or possible damage to the front end. And I want to say something as a ham. You, you know, uh, oh, I'm worried about blowing up my front end. And you may be surprised that pretty much every HF radio your own the front end is full-time connected to the antenna, regardless of what frequency you've actually got the VFO dialed to. You know, in our case, we come into the bandpass filters and into the um, uh, A to D converters, right? And I, they're not grounded if they're not in use, correct? They're just always... They're not grounded. Nope, that's they're correct. always there. And I know my ICOM's like that. Um, probably every other ICOM I owned about. So uh, just keep that in mind, uh so that you know we're always doing that and then the other thing the radio does that is just sort of the baseband of this we're always receiving from 30 kilohertz to 54 megahertz 100 percent of the time this is why you're able to be on 160 and 6 simultaneously or hi alan or listen to a baseball game in six meters you just well, can't do it yeah, the same it's actually adapter. a smaller segment than that but it's we are receiving a big swath of um of yeah. um, of RF, yeah. You can't do it in the same slice. You have to do it in different pan adapters. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So that's different. So without any further ado, we I'm going to bring this up. Let's see which picture works better. Let's do with that one. And you'll see down here. There's three things you people tend to miss: tracking notch filter, uh, CW keyboard, and uh, f full duplex. And I'm going to set up a very simple example here, and uh, although it's, I can't demonstrate it very well on this tool, but you'll sort of get the idea. So we're going to add, we're on 10 meters, um, and we'll just we'll just set up like we are normal to uh, 10 and 1. Look at that, 10 meters actually open. There was actually signals here. There we go. And this is a flex 6500 on an HF 6V vertical. Not that that matters, but it's just the uh, just we're going to use it as our test frequency. I don't want to, if I was going to set this up to listen to myself, uh, well, we won't go there. Somebody's there. We'll just move over here. And I'm not actually going to transmit. We're just going to add another slice. So I hit the, you know, the plus RX button here. And so now automatically in sideband, that goes to a second slice that's five kilohertz up, generally because you would bring up a second slice if you were doing um, 
you know, split operation or something like that. And what we want to do is we're going to actually transmit on our normal antenna. This is antenna one. It could be a dummy load. It doesn't matter because there's going to be enough RF leakage around. We may drive our, um, our RF power down. You know, here it's actually almost zero because this radio gets used at uh, flea markets and stuff. So we'll just leave it really low. And uh, let's do something here, Dan. Let's just try some case in point. I'm going to go into TX right now. And uh, we're going to leave... Um, darn, I wish I had another antenna on here. Uh, if I had flip my receive antenna over to RXA. I've now split the transmit and the receive. And unfortunately, we see that guy go away because if I went into transmit, hopefully we'd still be able to see him while we're transmitting. But we do need to set this up so that we're receiving on a different antenna than we're transmitting. And uh, by pulling the second receiver right on top, right there, 28425, I'm going to receive on RXA or whatever. And there's nothing connected to RXA. There's going to be enough leakage. And I'm going to transmit antenna 1, which is where my resident antenna is. If I actually went into transmit now into MOX, uh, wow, we're actually going to hear me because of the way the mics are piped here. So that's fine. Uh, we could hear ourselves through our headphones. And that's one of the major features of full duplex. And you can try it and see what you get, and you're not going to hurt anything. And why is that? Well, because we've got the power down. But uh, we also are fairly well protected on the uh, in the front end. And you can see that in the manual. Dan, have you ever gotten... I, this is a test. I've never asked him. Have you ever received a radio with the front end blown? I have, yep. But uh, what, is it from the, this... Nope, not from doing this. Um, two causes, two possible causes. One would be uh, some sort of a um, um, EMP, uh, EMP um, electrostatic discharge. The antenna was was plugged in during a lightning storm, something like that. The other was uh, some unfortunate soul uh, wasn't aware of how his antennas were switched and was mm. switched 100 watts directly into the input um, of the um, uh, of the other um, of the receiver, and that um, is almost shot, shot himself in the problems, right? But yep. these things are really hardy, and you're not gonna, um, you know, you you will get, you can get overload indications if you're if you're um, transmitting at a, a high level of power, you, you can see a warning come up, but um, if the radio detects that it, it, it's the radio that's doing it to itself, it will uh, it will stop your transmission. Right. There's very good protection circuitry. We think, you know, Steve and company, Gerald and et cetera, do think of these things in the beginning of the design days. And uh, Steve being a very big microwave operator, and those guys are really hard on the radios because there's a lot of things going on, especially if you're a rover. So you know, a lot of things he considers... Uh, in the beginning. In the manual, this is the latest version of the manual for, uh, I think it says 3.1 on it, 38.4.3. Uh, uh, it talks about the levels and such here. Uh, I'm not going to read this out loud, but um, at levels above plus 15 dBm, which is, how much real RF is that? Is that 150 milliwatts? Uh, 10 dBm is uh, 100 milliwatts. Or is that right? One? Somebody's going to tell us in the chat who's faster at it than I am. And uh, the ADC can be damaged, uh, but if you read through, there's circuitry to protect the front end uh, for the most part. By the way, this radio here sits underneath my contest station beam. I've actually had it up in the middle of the contest and watched it scream about RF overload, and it you know uh, shut down in safe modes. So. That is a uh, full duplex for just listening to yourself. You don't have to pull out a second radio. Uh, you could, you've got a second radio. You can just pull out a second receiver. You split the receive and transmit antennas, uh, lower your power, and start doing hello, one, two, three. And then you can start playing with your transmit EQ 
and make quick and dirty adjustments. Uh, that's actually a discussion that Ken Wells will be talking about during the QSO Today Expo. That is his presentation regarding transmit audio. Uh, and then, of course, the other thing full duplex comes into place is uh, in a true SO, uh, SO2R environment where you're running on f different bands, different antennas, or high-speed CW in QSK when you've split your transmitter and your receiver. And that works really well. Yeah, 10 dBm is um, 10 milliwatts, by the way. 10 milliwatts. Okay, so this is 15. All right. And that's pretty much, Dan, anything we should add to that? Well, you know, full duplex is, um, um, you know, just just one just one feature. Um, with full, you know, with a dual SCU radio. I'll bring uh, one up if you can stall right. for a minute. Yeah, so with a dual SCU radio, um, you have a completely uh, independent front-end chain. Um, uh, receive chain that you can um, that you can use, and you can have it tuned to a completely different band, or um, you know, tuned to a uh, um, you know the current band. One one thing about um, remote use is, let's say you're sharing your radio uh, during a contest, for example. Um, and this would typically be a dual SCU radio, like a 6600. Um, you know, you need to you need to keep in mind that the um, uh, that each antenna is capable of tuning to the same band that the other uh, is on. So, um, if you were, were both operating 20 meter CW, for example, on the same band. Using two different receivers, you're gonna you're gonna get a um, uh, you know, you're gonna have some level of interference that you're gonna be able to pick up on the other station. So it's generally recommended that you um, operate on either different ends of the band or um, um, you know two different bands if you're operating on the same radio. It'd be like having the same. It'd be, it would be like having the same. Um, Two radios that are right next to each other, effectively sharing the same antenna. Yep. Arnie asked, "Can we do satellite?" Um, we don't recommend it. It's not impossible. I'll just leave it at that. It's uh, we don't sketch it out uh, on a single SC radio, but um, it's plausible. I've never tested it. Uh, Tim and I discussed it, but there was too much risk to even recommend it. Uh, in fact, funny you mentioned satellite because the two SCU radio I have was set up for our um, satellite work because I was doing some RS44. And this is a great example. Uh, actually, you'll see that in my global profile. I don't have full duplex turned on. But it's very common in a satellite environment to be transmitting on you know UHF and listening simultaneously, uh, simultaneously on VHF. Now, this radio is a 6600. You'll see that I'm using transverter A which is one of the spectral capture units on U on VHF and transverter B on um, UHF. If my intermediate frequencies were really close, uh, which is really 28 megahertz, I would actually probably see the other signal in within the radio while I was transmitting just by leakage, even though there's over 60 dB isolation between the ports. So... When you're in a, uh, a radio such as this, of course, I have a much, many more antennas to choose from, from antenna one, antenna two, receiver port A, uh, B, and transmitter A and B. And that's uh, that's it. And the same thing if I was running, if SO2R and this was 80 meters and this was 40 meters, I would probably have two separate antennas. And as long as my antennas are separated and we have a whole calculation worksheet on that to say what's truly front-end overload or what can you take, uh, you can um, you can find that on our website at, under the helpdesk.flexradio.com and search on uh, RF calculation worksheet and it'll pop up. So, Hey, George. And I so that's Bob, Bob McGuire, the famous Bob McGuire, I think. 
right? Is that or the infamous Bob McGuire is, is oh, saying he's get, getting ready to hook up a 6700 for satellite um, and weak signal work. Um, and uh, yeah, there it is. Look at that. Um, so he, um, yeah, uh, the 6700 would be perfect for you, Bob, and I'm sure you know that. I'm going to diverse a bit from this because I mentioned the name Bob McGuire to a friend of mine that works on commercial satellites, and she knew your name. So <laughs> I thought that was small world. So, uh, And so this is what some other people are doing. I don't know of any other radio that does this. So infamous, Bob. And, and David right. has, a, has sort of the... the the ultimate station looks like a 6700 and a 6600 m and um uh you get to listen to yourself uh well you can possibly listen to your signal from three different perspectives uh, uh using that setup excellent all right barring any more questions i think that's all we have and uh Bob, thanks for the reminder. I should have known about that. That's uh, that's great. I'm glad you jumped in, and uh, uh, hopefully this is helpful to some of you. We won't keep you very long. Uh, we have a ton of videos, by the way, coming up for the March 20, uh, 2022 QSO Today Expo, which is in two weeks. And if you happen to be watching this after the date, well, those videos will eventually be available um, about a month after. Or if you're coming to the show, you can watch them during the month they're available. So 73, have a great weekend. Do you want to go over the list of um, topics that we're covering? Uh, for the future oh, yeah. Day? I don't have them handy. You don't? See, off the top oh. of my hand. Okay, off the top of my head. Uh, Anna's talking about the API. So if you're into programming or into that, I am talking about integration. I'm trying to kill the RS-232 port. Uh, Dan, you are? I'm talking about um, uh, station integration and automation. In automation, which I haven't seen yet. Um, we have uh, Tim Wells talking about, as I mentioned earlier, getting the best uh, audio side pan you can on a budget. Uh, Tim is doing an introduction on um, more for new users and, and what about what do I do with a flex radio type of thing. So it's an introductory uh, talk. Uh, JP in English and in Spanish, two separate presentations, is doing a product line overview. If you're thinking about buying one, he'll tell you a bit more. And last but not least, uh, Gerald uh, Youngblood is going to talk about the myth of SDR overload. And, uh, what, and, it, and it's a bit of a rehash of an old presentation, but very interesting about how the... Um, the, they're actually very happy with a lot of signals, not just one. And that one's interesting, and I've watched it a few times. Yeah, the more signal, the better. The more signals, the, more, the better. That's Isn't really that, what that, it works out to. Right, that's great. The more signals you pound into a, a, a direct sampling radio, the happier it is. So We'll see you there. All right. Dan? That's it. You know, thanks, everybody, for um, being a, a great customer and your interest and. Uh, if you don't have a flex radio, um, make sure you uh, um, get one. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the best advice I can give. By the way, Lori asked me to mention, and I totally forgot, so I'm glad you brought that up. We actually have inventory. We have lots of radios. We have lots of amplifiers are catching up on our tuner genius, and so those should be caught up in right. it might be a little longer than we like, but, man, those are flying out the door, and... Uh, in, in today's world where there seems to be a lot of shortages, we seem to be doing okay. So Right. Well, we're configured to order on the, um, um, the radios, uh, which, is, uh, which is really great. You order it, and it's built. They start building it the day you order it or the next day if it comes in late in the day. And it, we, we test it and ship it out to you just as quickly as we can get them built, which is really awesome. So you get a brand new radio with your name. It's sort of like the Dell model, right? You order a laptop, yep. they build it for you. <laughs> There's no dust on it at all. There's no, There's no dust. Yeah. Or even yeah. on the box. All right. All right. 73, everybody. Take care. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. I